Chapter 10. John. John climbed the steps slowly, trying not to think that this might be the last time ever. Ghost padded silently beside him. Outside, snow swirled through the castle gates, and the yard was all noise and chaos. But inside the thick stone walls, it was still warm and quiet. Too quiet for John's liking. He reached the landing and stood for a long moment, afraid. Ghost nuzzled at his hand. He took courage from that. He straightened and entered the room. Lady Stark was there beside his bed. She had been there, day and night, for close on a fortnight. Not for a moment had she left Bran's side. She had her meals brought to her there, and chamber pots as well, and a small hard bed to sleep on, though it was said she had scarcely slept at all. She fed him herself, the honey and water and herb mixture that sustained life. Not once did she leave the room, so John had stayed away. But now there was no more time. He stood at the door for a moment, afraid to speak, afraid to come closer. The window was open. Below, a wolf howled. Ghost heard and lifted his head. Lady Stark looked over. For a moment, she did not seem to recognize him. Finally, she blinked. What are you doing here? She asked in a voice strangely flat and emotionless. I came to see Bran, John said, to say goodbye. Her face did not change. Her long auburn hair was dull and tangled. She looked as though she had aged twenty years. You've said it. Now go away. Part of him wanted only to flee, but he knew that if he did, he might never see Bran again. He took a nervous step into the room. Please, he said. Something cold moved in her eyes. I told you to leave, she said. We don't want you here. Once, that would have sent him running. Once, that might have even made him cry. Now it only made him angry. He would be a sworn brother of the Night's Watch soon, and face worse dangers than Catelyn Tully Stark. He's my brother, he said. Shall I call the guards? Call them, John said, defiant. You can't stop me from seeing him. He crossed the room, keeping the bed between them, and looked down on Bran where he lay. She was holding one of his hands. It looked like a claw. This was not the Bran he remembered. The flesh had all gone from him. His skin stretched tight over bones like sticks. Under the blanket, his legs bent in ways that made John sick. His eyes were sunken deep into black pits, open, but they saw nothing. The fall had shrunken him somehow. He looked half a leaf, as if the first strong wind would carry him off to his grave. Yet under the frail cage of those shattered ribs, his chest rose and fell with each shallow breath. Bran, he said. I'm sorry I didn't come before. I was afraid. He could feel the tears rolling down his cheeks. John no longer cared. Don't die, Bran. Please. We're all waiting for you to wake up. Me and Rob and the girls. Everyone. Lady Stark was watching. She had not raised a cry. John took that for acceptance. Outside the window, the dire wolf howled again. The wolf that Bran had not had time to name. I have to go now. John said. Uncle Benjamin is waiting. I'm to go north to the wall. We have to leave today before the snows come. He remembered how excited Bran had been at the prospect of the journey. It was more than he could bear, the thought of leaving him behind like this. John brushed away his tears, leaned over, and kissed his brother lightly on the lips. I wanted him to stay here with me, Lady Stark said softly. John watched her wary. She was not even looking at him. She was talking to him, but for a part of her, it was as though he were not even in the room. I prayed for it, she said dully. He was my special boy. I went to the sept and prayed seven times to the seven faces of God that Ned would change his mind and leave him here with me. Sometimes prayers are answered. John did not know what to say. It wasn't your fault, he managed after an awkward silence. Her eyes found him. 
They were full of poison. I need none of your absolution, bastard. John lowered his eyes. She was cradling one of Bran's hands. He took the other, squeezed it, fingers like the bones of birds. Goodbye, he said. He was at the door when she called out to him. John, she said. He should have kept going, but she had never called him by his name before. He turned to find her looking at his face, as if she were seeing it for the first time. Yes, he said. It should have been you, she told him. Then she turned back to Bran and began to weep, her whole body shaking with the sobs. John had never seen her cry before. It was a long walk down to the yard. Outside, everything was noise and confusion. Wagons were being loaded, men were shouting, horses were being harnessed and saddled and led from the stables. A light snow had begun to fall, and everyone was in an uproar to be off. Rob was in the middle of it, shouting commands with the best of them. He seemed to have grown of late, as if Bran's fall and his mother's collapse had somehow made him stronger. Grey Wind was at his side. "'Uncle Benjamin is looking for you,' he told John. "'He wanted to be gone an hour ago.' "'I know,' said John. "'Soon.' He looked around at all the noise and confusion. "'Leaving is harder than I thought.' "'For me, too,' Rob said. He had snow in his hair, melting from the heat of his body. "'Did you see him?' John nodded, not trusting himself to speak. "'He's not going to die,' Rob said. "'I know it.' "'You Starks are hard to kill,' John agreed." His voice was flat and tired. The visit had taken all the strength from him. Rob knew something was wrong. My mother... She was... very kind, John told him. Rob looked relieved. Good, he smiled. The next time I see you, you'll be all in black. John forced himself to smile back. It was always my color. How long do you think it will be? Soon enough, Rob promised. He pulled John to him and embraced him fiercely. Farewell, Snow. John hugged him back. And you, Stark, take care of Bran. I will. They broke apart and looked at each other awkwardly. Uncle Benjamin said to send you to the stables if I saw you, Rob finally said. I have one more farewell to make, John told him. Then I haven't seen you, Rob replied. John left him standing there in the snow surrounded by wagons and wolves and horses. It was a short walk to the armory. He picked up his package and took the covered bridge across to the keep. Arya was in her room, packing a polished ironwood chest that was bigger than she was. Nymeria was helping. Arya would only have to point, and the wolf would bound across the room, snatch up some wisp of silk in her jaws, and fetch it back. But when she smelled ghost, she sat down on her haunches and yelped at them. Arya glanced behind her, saw John, and jumped to her feet. She threw her skinny arms tight around his neck. I was afraid you were gone, she said, her breath catching in her throat. They wouldn't let me out to say goodbye. What did you do now? John was amused. Arya disentangled himself from him, herself from him and made a face. Nothing! I was all packed in everything! She gestured at the huge chest, no more than a third full and at the clothes that were scattered all over the room. Septimore Dane says I have to do it all over. My things weren't properly folded, she says. A proper Southron lady doesn't just throw her clothes inside her chest like old rags, she says. Is that what you did, little sister? Well, they're going to get all messed up anyway, she said. Who cares how they're folded? Septimore Dane, John told her. I don't think she'd like Nymeria helping either. The she-wolf regarded him silently with her dark golden eyes. It's just as well. I have something for you to take with you, and it has to be packed very carefully. Her face lit up. A present? You could call it that. Close the door. Wary but excited, Arya checked the hall. Nymeria, here, guard! She let the wolf out there to warn of intruders and closed the door. By then, John had pulled off the rags he'd wrapped it in. He held it out to her. Arya's eyes went wide, dark eyes like his. A sword, she said in a small, hushed breath. The scabbard was soft gray leather, supple as sin. John drew out the blade slowly, 
so she could see the deep blue sheen of the steel. This is no toy, he told her. Be careful you don't cut yourself. The edges are sharp enough to shave with. Girls don't shave, Arya said. Maybe they should. Have you ever seen the Septa's legs? She giggled at him. It's so skinny. So are you, John told her. I had Meekin make this special. The Bravos use swords like this in Pentos and Mir and the other free cities. It won't hack a man's head off, but it can poke him full of holes if you're fast enough. I can be fast, Arya said. You'll have to work at it every day. He put the sword in her hands, showed her how to hold it, and stepped back. How does it feel? Do you like the balance? I think so, Arya said. First lesson, John said. Stick them with the pointy end. Arya gave him a whap on the arm with the flat of her blade. The blow stung, but John found himself grinning like an idiot. I know which end to use, Arya said. A doubtful look crossed her face. Septimore Dane will take it away from me. Not if she doesn't know you have it, John said. Who will I practice with? You'll find someone, John promised her. King's Landing is a true city, a thousand times the size of Winterfell. Until you find a partner, watch how they fight in the yard. Run and hide and make yourself strong, and whatever you do... Arya knew what was coming next. They said it all together. Don't tell Sansa. John messed up her hair. I'll miss you, little sister. Suddenly, she looked like she was going to cry. I wish you were coming with us. Different roads sometimes lead to the same castle. Who knows? He was feeling better now. He was not going to let himself be sad. I better go. I'll spend my first year on the wall emptying, ch emptying chamber pots if I keep Uncle Ben waiting any longer. Arya ran to him for a last hug. Put down the sword first, John warned her, laughing. She set it aside almost shyly and showered him with kisses. When he turned back at the door, she was holding it again, trying it for balance. I almost forgot, he told her. All the best swords have names. Like ice, she said. She looked at the blade in her hand. Does this have a name? Oh, tell me. Can't you guess? John teased. Your very favorite thing. Arya seemed puzzled at first, and then it came to her. She was that quick. They said it together. Needle! The memory of her laughter warmed him on the long ride north.